I'm there. Uh, I am one half of the McDowell team. I am Dwight. This is my wife, Angela. And for those of you that are just joining in, if you would give us a thumbs up, we really would appreciate it. Uh, we will be officially getting started in about one minute. Um, we are just kind of setting everything up, and we want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, you're welcome to tell a friend. You're welcome to share this <clears throat> and bring others to the line. Uh, we will be tonight talking about family bonding, and um, we um, it is a pleasure. Uh, I'm Dwight. And this is my beautiful wife, Angela. How are you? I'm good. I'm <laughs> and we good. are your instructors tonight. Um for the lesson number eight, for those of y'all that have been following us the entire way, um, it is um, this is where you'll get a chance to uh, work it, work in the workbook. You're able to go to nlccva.org, uh, and if I got that wrong, somebody type it in the chat. But you can download an actual book free of charge there. Uh, you can also uh, come back and rewatch the the playback. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Dwight McDowell. This is my wife, Angela McDowell. Uh, we have now celebrated as of November 27th of 2021, our 32nd year in marriage. And I am passionately in love with her. Uh, I don't even say I'm still in love. I am passionately in love with her. So um, I'm not looking to, when you say you're still in love, I mean, you're looking, you might be looking to fall out of love. I'm not. So we're going to be talking about family bonding tonight. Uh, we encourage you. Um, to uh, share this, tell a friend to send somebody a link. I I've, I've learned to copy the link and then use my text. And just um, usually, what the statistics are, you have to invite one in every three people that you, every three people that you invite, one will show up. So I, I like to tell people invite four, and then you have a chance of one and a half people or two people showing up. So if you're here tonight, we're thankful to have you on. We're asking you to share this, uh, and for those that see it later, uh, welcome. Again, I am Dwight McDowell. This is my wife, Angela, and we'll be teaching tonight on family bonding. So, babe, you want to pray us in tonight and yeah, then start us? Let's get started. Um, let's uh, uh, turn our hearts before the Lord. God, we just thank you. Thank you tonight. Thank you for this, uh, yes, this great evening. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, God. We honor you. We just bless you for this time and this opportunity that we get to sit together thank at a time God. in our world where technology can be used for the kingdom. So God, we just thank you and just bless you for tonight. We ask God that you would give us wisdom. Thank you. God, our words tonight, God. Uh, we thank you right now for hearts of uh, learning and understanding, God. And we just thank you and just bless you for that we are in your family, oh, God. Jesus. In thank Jesus' you, name, amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, once again, if you just joined us, I am Dwight. This is Angela McDowell. We're going to be teaching tonight on family bonding. We won't be before you long. We ask that you go ahead and grab you a pen and piece of paper. You might hear something that you want to jot down. You can always go back and reference it. Um, <clears throat> I learned in the word of God many, many years ago that people can tell you about the word and it's great to hear it. Uh, they can show they can show it to you, but if you go back and read it for yourself, <laughs> every, you know, and so there'll be different scriptures that we'll be giving out tonight. Mm -hmm. and you're welcome to go back and research those so that you don't think that just Dwight and Angie made it up. We we are going to tell you the God, God's word, mm -hmm. but we also try to walk it out and live it out. But we also like to go and research it for ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. So welcome to Family Bonding. And for those of you that have been tracking the entire time with all the other teachers, we are now on lesson eight. Um, and we... Uh, taught last week on uh, conflict mm -hmm. in the uh, conflict in the management. Week, conflict management conflict in the family well, and resolving and resolving conflict, conflict. <laughs> and so um, we get a chance tonight um, our senior pastors Ken and Nancy Gary have invited us to uh, teach tonight as well so we thank you for that opportunity and you end up y'all stuck with us for two weeks in a row so yes. let's do it <laughs> <laughs> like oh them again. Oh, we thank you. So let's look at our key verse tonight. Um, our key verse comes out of Ephesians 4, verse 3. It says, always keep yourselves united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourselves together with peace. That one line of scripture says that, that, that could, you can put that anywhere in families and um, uh, married for married couples, um, parents and children, anything um this this is by yourselves together with peace yeah there's nothing like peace there's nothing <clears throat> like peace when someone walks in your home you want them to feel the feel peace when they walk through the door that's good um so we're gonna talk about even how to do that because if there's you know tumultuous times and things of that nature in, in your home 
uh, people might not feel peace at the time they walk through the door. <clears throat> so let's look at this. It says, you got some. You got to add some. I was just gonna say we encourage you to um, share this and, and invite a friend to join us tonight. Uh, we got the verses in there, and uh, we're just gonna be talking about family bonding. So mm -hmm. share this quickly, or start your own watch party and bring some others on. Not because we're teaching, but because the word of God is going forward and is talking about bonding the family. Uh, all families got to have bonding. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna. Everyone uh, wants bonding. Yeah. But you have to work to. You got to work bonded. to get that thing and keep yeah. it bonded in every mm -hmm. uh, direction. Mm -hmm. um, so I encourage you to tell somebody to get them on immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the good news about <coughs> everybody wanting and bonding and wanting their family to be, to be close is that we have the capacity to create that. So it says here that we can create an atmosphere in our homes where our individual <coughs> family members have a sense of belonging. Uh, to a loving and caring unit. It says, this is achieved when families begin to learn how to bond to one another through shared activities. We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Goals, <clears throat> working together, ministry, uh, doing ministry together, um, and things of that nature. So this lesson will show us some ways that we can begin strengthening our bond uh, of our family. Because I think we're born with a bond you know, we're born, we're in that family and we're, we're bonded to them. That's good. But how can we strengthen that bond as the children grow and as your married life grows year after year? How, how do we do that? So the first feeling is bonding, B-O-N-D-I-N-G. So bonding is important to your family. It just is. <laughs> God made us relational people for a reason. And we have that longing to, like it says here, to belong to a loving, caring unit. Yeah. It's in us. It's in us. So um, Some, you know how sometimes you hear somebody say, I don't even need no family. I don't need nobody. Don't yeah. believe it. <laughs> don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yes, you do. You, everybody wants to belong somewhere and spe specifically to a family. Mm -hmm. um, and there's all kinds of types of families. Like when you when you are at a just a division with your family. Um, I, when I grew up, um, I, I became a part of a gang running from my family. Mm -hmm. um, and those that you can try to bond to something because else. I just tried to bond to something else. I, a gang, I wanted to be a part of that family. Um, when I, after I got out of the gang eventually and I bonded with the military, which became my family, and still I'm back to wanting a family. So my wife and I have spent years bonding our family. And so we're going to talk about that heavily, but I just want you to know everybody wants to have family bond family bonding mm -hmm. and be tight be close together so mm -hmm. absolutely so uh <clears throat> john 13 and 1 says <clears throat> in part says having loved his own who were in the world he loved them until the end and it just says christ taught us the principles of bonding he had healthy <clears throat> relationships with his disciples that were demonstrated by his unconditional unchanging love for them mm. this is the kind of relationship we all want in our families we want to love and be loved yeah that's good unconditionally that's good. like i love you today because you did everything i told you to do <laughs> and the first thing you, you the first time you don't you don't feel the love yeah i don't love you anymore right mm -hmm. like we were talking about last week i i i, I gotta love you but i ain't gotta like you yeah you know but we want to love you we want to love you and like you yeah <laughs> you know we want to, we we want to know how the home is the one place where we can truly be ourselves and where we are always welcome. You do. You want to be able to walk in, right. take your shoes off. You know, I was over my mom's today. When I when I go uh, over my parents' house, I walk in. We all do it. Walk in. We take our shoes yep. off. Everybody get the seat they want, yep. you know. Um, sometimes the kids go upstairs or whatever, but it's we go to the like, refrigerator. Yeah, go to the refrigerator. Yeah, Grab the remote control. It's, yeah, so it's it's that you always want that um in your in your home, but you have to work at it now. Yeah, you know if you if you have little ones in the house. Uh, second time the second B says a family can experience get this y'all, you can experience two things, well one or the other, <laughs> bondage or bonding. Which oh. one do you want? Come on. So the difference of, <laughs> between bondage, B-O-N-D-A-G-E, and bonding, bondage is unwanted attachment that confines people in relationships and situations over which they have no <clears throat> control. Mm. Okay? But bonding is life-giving. 
Come on, life giving because we're because we're bonding together. I can fuel, I can refuel, or I can fuel off of you. Yes. Your excitement about being in this family, yes. I can get excited. Yes. You're, what you're going through, I get a chance to feel it, whether it's, yes. it's upbeat, whether it's downbeat. I get a chance. I'm bonded with you. So right. it's not mm -hmm. in bondage. I don't I ain't being made to stay in this thing right. in your as your family. I'm loving being bonded to her. We're loving being bonded to our children. It's life-giving. It's life-giving. That's, life That's good. That's it. Class over is <laughs> life-giving. Um, it's empowering, you know, it's encouraging. Um, but this is is a life-giving, bonding is life-giving, empowering aspect of relationships that supports, it's one of my favorite words, secures and sustains. Um, it is the process by which we develop trust and <coughs> community, you know, together. So that's what bonding is. So that's what we want in our family. We want it to be life-giving. We want it to be empowering. We want it to be secure and supportive. And we want it to be sustaining, that's you good. know, absolutely sustaining, not falling uh, apart every month or or or, or whatnot. Um, listen to this, y'all. It says when it when we become isolated. Okay, isolation is like the biggest threat to families because you pull away and go by yourself, um, and that's where the enemy can talk to you, or you can talk to yourself, and whatever the thing is. You need something. I do. Um, talk to yourself or whatever. It says, but when we become isolated, lose trust, and never communicate, our families become bondage to us. Yeah. So that means you don't want to be with someone one that you feel like they're bondage to you. So, but when we are considerate of others in our family, exercise trust, and intentionally, that's an action word. You have to do some kind of work. Intentionally share our lives our families experience bonding. So that's also how you bond. You want to know what's going on. Your kids come on. You want to know, you know, what happened. My, our daughter comes, you know, she gets in the car. It's like, how was your day? It was okay. But we let her warm up and settle down. Then she comes back and tells us something that happened. In and then when she, when we let, what you said, when we let her warm up and settle down, she then will ask, did, what you, mm -hmm. so she'll say, like, what'd you do right. today? So what'd you do? So what'd you do? Yeah. So what'd you do? That type thing. Because, she now wants to join the bond as well, even further. So, right. but when they come in the car, they they they've been at school. Mm -hmm. Um, even when you come in from work or from if you're a full time student as an adult, you still gotta get that settled place to get into the place, and then you give your part. We're gonna talk about that heavily. What you give to the family. Amen. <clears throat> okay, and the last point of this uh, bondage and bonding piece, it says divorce is the result of the process by which the bonds, which is like glue or adhesive of the marriage relationships starts coming apart and the marriage deteriorates into bondage. However, there are things that we can do to restore the bonding before it results in divorce. And that's not saying, you know, maybe some people divorce on the line. That's not saying, you know, you know, we're pointing the finger. It's mm -hmm. just that, that we're saying this is what happened. You know, that bonding, that, that ad adhesive start to loosen up and it start to separate. Um, so the second piece we're talking about is some of my husband's favorite things about our family and how we walk it out. Um, of course, with God's help for sure. But this says family members bond when they serve. The feeling is served. Family members bond when they serve one another. Somebody got to catch that. <laughs> family members <clears throat> didn't say they bond when they shout out at each other. Right. <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't say they bond when they wave at each other. When they serve each other, that means when they that it's okay for me to go and pick up my daughter's book bag and put the books in it for her. Yeah, she done threw them all over the floor. Or I'm serving her. I'm, I, we, we're bonding when, I, when she's looking for a water bottle that they have to bring their own water bottle to school now, and I've already filled it up. Or when my wife when she when she cooked dinner and she's fixing the place and I'll stop and say, hey, let me fix your plate. Or she'll say, babe, can I bring you your plate? When you serve one another, 
<laughs> that's when we're becoming tighter and tighter. That's that glue my wife's talking about comes apart, it, but it's being put back together. It's being it's being tighter. When we get a chance to to bring each other some vitamin C right now, we try to stay pepped up on vitamin C. And so uh, we don't and we catch ourselves and sometimes I'll say, Hey little girl, want some candy? I'll be messing with her. She's like, and I'm giving her two vitamin C. Well, she's giving me two vitamin C. We're trying to, we're bonded because we're serving each other at that time. And I'm telling you, if you ain't served your own family in a while, as we go into this tonight, and if you feel conviction coming up, fix that thing, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, babe. <clears throat> okay. So uh, John 13, 8 through 14, uh, verse 8 says, uh, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. So Jesus <coughs> is washing feet here between that verse and verse 14. It says, the first aspect of family bonding is the process of serving and ministering to one another. Not only are we serving one another, but we're ministering to one another in the house. If if my daughter had a bad day or my son, you know, had a bad day, we're ministering to them, you know, telling them what God says about them and that they can do it and praying, praying for them and with them, uh, things of that nature. If my husband's like, I got to take this uh, assessment at work and yeah. Um, a, a, a test or whatever. Okay, let's 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 get this. You got this. You know, and we're ministering to one another. Um, in in the home, um, all members of the family should be willing to sacrifice personal time when someone in the family needs them. Come on, put yourself aside. Put your agenda aside. Put your stuff down. Look your, you know, especially your kids in the eye. I have to catch myself a lot of times because one of our our, do our youngest daughter. She's uh, very excitable. She wants to tell you stuff, and and I'm doing something at the time, and I'm listening. I can do that. I can. I can. I can. But I have to realize. I have to look at her. She's not telling me to, but I want to want her to know that I'm paying attention. So, um, again, let me read that again. All members of a family should be willing to sacrifice personal time when someone in the family needs them. Now, listen. If you got children sitting around you right now, we're talking to them. If you got, if your husband is sitting next to you right now, we're talking to him. If your wife is sitting to you next, sitting next to you right now, we're talking to them. It says that when you're willing to sacrifice your, some of your own personal time to do something. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a project out in our yard just a little while ago, and I know my wife literally wanted to go put up groceries. I know she did, but she knew that this was that that, that uh, very important to me, and she sacrificed her time of doing that to come and walk around this project I'm working on and it did something for me. It, it, it gave me a new uh, enlightenment to keep working harder at it. <clears throat> but she sacrificed, sacrificed her own time to serve me. In turn, I want to do the same. I wanted to, my, I, I remember my son had asked me, I was making some salmon. Thank you to that person that blessed me with that salmon tonight. <laughs> but I made the salmon, but my son asked me earlier, says, Dad, would you make some of that strawberry, um, that glaze that you make for the salmon? And I thought earlier, I was like, all right, so I'll try and I just didn't want to, but just before we were about to eat the salmon, I went and whipped it up because, and he was so, uh, he, he just went and put it right on his plate. He said he wasn't even that hungry, but because I made the, the, the glaze and you sacrificed some extra time, he took the extra time to go ahead and say, I'm a, and, and, and applaud me for making it. Not that I needed to have the pat on the back, but because I wanted to serve him by doing so. When is the last time you serve those in your household with, with not like it's a bondage to serve them, but it's mm -hmm. a, it's a, not a, I had to, but I get to, I get to that kind of attitude. I get to serve you. I get a chance to, mm -hmm. to, to bless you with making your meal or I get a chance with blessing you. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes my wife will hand me her glasses and say, and, or she'll be messing with them. And sometimes I'll hand her my sleeve or my bottom of my shirt and she'll clean her glasses. Man, I get a chance to serve you by bring my, <laughs> I'm, hum, I want to humble myself in such a way that she knows that she's that important to me. So, amen. Amen. Okay. So bonding occurs when a family member recognizes that you have taken <clears throat> special time. Now get this. Bonding occurs not when you do it, but when the other person recognizes that you've done that. That's when that connection comes and that bonding, Come that bonding comes. Um, as you taking that time and you paid attention uh, to what they needed. You know, that's what bonding, even if they don't say anything, it's, our, it's happening. It has to happen. Wow. wow. It has to happen. Okay. And thank you, honey. You're welcome, babe. And um, <clears throat> in many families, individual members are completely isolated in their own little worlds. How many? Mm -hmm. This says dad is in his shop. Mom is in her kitchen. Kids are in their rooms. Uh, dad might be in the kitchen. 
mom might be in the shower. Yeah. It just depends what kind of family. Which kind of family you in? Yeah. Uh, the kids in the room, maybe playing a game. Um, you know, or they just going from the house. They got other things to do. It said each member seems to be, uh, member seems to be on a quest for privacy and space, and there is no awareness of the needs and hurts of let's, the others in the house. Let's bring that more to, to date. How many of y'all can be find yourself guilty? And we're first to admit, to acknowledge this. You and your children, or you and your spouse, are sitting in the exact same room, and you're both texting, or all y'all are texting at the exact same time. Literally not talking to each other, but we're texting back and forth and we're trying to, we're on a quest to get some, some, some separate time. We got to get past that where we say, you know what? Every night my wife will grab everybody's cell phone. She don't even be mean about it. She'll say, everybody put, give me the cell phone or I'm going to tell you to turn it off. So we got to a place that you don't have to we take them. We'll night. just turn. When we have movie night, she just wants you to put them down. And so we have a, a game now. We play like, hey, babe. Uh, Ryan's still watching, looking at his phone, <laughs> or or somebody said, "Hey, mom, dad is over there messing with his phone." So we just because we're gonna we have tattle, we, we tattle, we tattle on each other. We can really have this bonding time. There's other times that uh, I'm not a big reader, I'm, and, and some of y'all may know me personally. Um, you, you can buy me a book, and I'm gonna read and find pages that excite me. That's just how I do it. I'm not bragging about that. I'm just saying this is how I read. I try. So and <clears throat> but. Uh, a lot of times when we're on vacation, mm -hmm. my wife has it set. We put on our schedule that we're going to have um, reading time. And she'll tell everybody to get the thing they want to read. And me and my, one of my, my older son, we just like the, the worst two on that. So we find something that we can read, whether it be the back of a, of a playing card or the Uno <laughs> card. But we're going to sit down and read. And then she has us tell her about it. But we're bonding at that time. So... <laughs> I just, just want to share those. Um, and those of y'all that are putting chats in there, thank you, Rachel, uh, that's hey, participating. Thank you, uh, Pastor Rodney. Thank you, Pastor Ken. Thank you. We, we, if you got something that you want to add to there, and if this hits you in any way, let us know. Um, we, we will do our very best to acknowledge you, but others are watching it at the same time. So you still have time if you would like to add and uh, share and bring somebody else to the line. Not because we're teaching, but because we're talking about family bonding. How many other families do you know could use some more bonding? So mm -hmm. take a moment and share that. share this link with them. Verse 14 says, you also are to wash one another's feet. Come now, on. I know a lot of people say, oh, now, mm, Angie, you done went there about <laughs> washing feet. But this is a, this symbolizes, <clears throat> this symbolizes, here's why I can't read. <laughs> read. <laughs> Wait, if you can't read, <laughs> I want you to listen to the word of God. Bring Holly in the room and, and tell her to read it to you, man. <laughs> Not only can you read, but we know you can write. Yes, so, sir. We've heard, and we've heard your stories, brother. You can, you've can. you already messed that up. You can read and write very well. <laughs> so it says, washing symbolizes taking the lowest position and serving others. Family members need to serve one another. There, It, it, it came up again. Family members need to serve one another. How about washing your spouse's car? How about doing the laundry? How about cooking dinner one evening? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, did you say, how about doing your spouse's laundry? Doing the laundry, yeah. The whole family. Doing the whole family. Doing Just doing everybody's laundry. Instead of, how about how about I'm doing the family's laundry and I'm complaining about it the whole time I'm doing it? What, what kind of bond is that building? That's not serving. Not at all. That's not serving. Man, I get excited about washing the laundry, period. I get excited when my wife, like the other night my wife, um, one of our favorite meals here is spaghetti. And we didn't know she was making spaghetti the other night, man. She served the entire family and made the meal and filled and packed all our plates real tall. And we just thought we had been served like kings and queens in this place over a plate of spaghetti. <laughs> and I think she used ground turkey and tricked me too. So it was just amazing. So there's so many ways that you can serve your own family. And I just want to side roll. I want to talk about when we also serving in our spiritual families as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Tight in the family. Some of y'all belong to various churches around the country. Um, but serving in the house of God, serving your, your brothers and sisters in Christ. That, those are things, man, I remember um, just recently, one of our sisters in Christ lost a family member. And I remember my wife just reaching in her purse and saying, here, do whatever you need to do with this. And so she was serving the family through serve, handing that to her sister. I remember one time wanting to serve and, and serve into the house. I remember cutting somebody's grass. And when I stopped cutting grass, the, the people serving the people, I had to, to, to be in the body, to, to be bonded with some of the family of the body of Christ. I mowed 10 yards. Now, I'm not telling you any of this stuff that you have to do. The same thing about um, washing the laundry. My wife mentioned washing the, doing the family's laundry. Man, I love doing the family's laundry. 
And and even now, when my children get older, they all start doing their own. And every now and then, I'll still get a chance. And they'll say, Dad, could you, could you put mine in the dryer or could you take it out? And that's a chance for me to get a chance to serve the family. And so I get excited about that. And I'm just telling you, all this is when you're bonding with your family, when you can serve them and feel when you feel good about serving the family. That's when you that's when you've arrived, when you feel when you feel like you're dreaded, like you're in bondage behind serving the family because you brought your wife a plate or because you did, did her larger because she washed your car or came out there and, and, and cut the grass and, 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 and did it with, cause you were yelling the whole time. No, but when you can do that and you yeah. feel good about doing it, yeah. I'm telling you, you have arrived with family bonding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how are we starting this bonding if we haven't done it? Well, we talked a little bit about that, but this says all bonding begins with an obvious effort to serve. Wow. Even a few minutes ago when we were talking about uh, uh, bonding and empowering one another, that how it's life-giving. Yeah. You know, we're bonding because I noticed that you did something <coughs> for me. I might not say anything, mm -hmm. but that's a bond like, oh, that was nice. He did that for yeah. me. But, uh, the, because, but it came out of serving. It came out of serving. So serving others speaks of love, care, and commitment, and is the first step to bonding in your family. You cannot bond with your family if you do not serve. Wow. <clears throat> that, it, it just, it just, that just kind of goes together. Just goes if together. you got that thought, man, me and my family are so tight, and you can't even, you can't wash that car, you can't bring them home a mm -hmm. special surprise sometime, mm -hmm. you, you're in denial. Yep. Serving, it says to serve. I want to tell you something about serving. There is a way that you can serve your own family, man, that it will cause you to minister to God. Yeah. This scripture is not here in this particular one, but in 1 Samuel, the third chapter, verse one, check that sometime and read down a couple verses. But it was young uh, Samuel who was serving Eli, who was his family. Mm -hmm. He was just bringing him water sometime, and, and uh, Eli couldn't see. Mm -hmm. He would lead him around as a young kid. Lead him around and help him get to the bathroom, cut the grass, put, uh, put up his food, uh, bring him his food, put up the dishes. Mm -hmm. And the word of God says that he served in such a way that he ministered to God. Mm -hmm. So if you're having a problem bonding by serving your family, check first Samuel the third chapter, verse one, and go all the way down to 10. Go all the way to verse 22. But it says when you do that, when 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 I just take this and wipe anything off my wife's face, because she don't she likes to be nice, she don't want to be all sweaty on the camera. When I do this. I'm look. I'm serving her, but I'm ministering to God. If nothing else, get to a place that you serve your family in such a way that you minister to your God. That you're giving that that God says and uh, looks down and says, "Man, look at little Angela looking out and serving her family. Not because she has to, because she gets, but she, because she gets to. But she's ministering to me when she does it. When you're serving your family members, you're ministering to God." He's, God is looking at you smiling and saying, man, look at little Rachel down there serving the family. She's ministering to me. How many of y'all want to serve your family and minister to God at the same time? Look at serving your family different after tonight. Amen. Amen. Okay, the third piece of this, we just said um, family members bond when they serve one another. The second thing is family members bond when they play together. Whoa. John 14, Whoa. let not your heart be troubled in verse one. It says today's life is filled with pressure and stress. Christ, however, said to his disciples, come apart and rest a while. <coughs> uh, that's in Mark 6, 31. He knew the necessity and the value of taking time to get away from everything in order to be refreshed and rejuvenated. <laughs> Did you tell me that? What does that, that sound like? The V word, vacation. Doesn't vacation, it? man. <laughs> vacation. So the, when, we were, when we were studying this, it's like that's a vacation. That's a vacation. Rest. You know, when we when we bond and we rest, and I'm not saying everybody, but how we bond in our family, we want to. Our kids looking like, okay, what are we doing for spring break? Because they know that's what we, we're going away. What are we doing for summer vacation? You know, sometimes we go away for Christmas break. So we're bonding. When we go away, we do things together and then we do things. Okay, yeah. you can go ahead and go play your game mm -hmm. or you go read or whatever, but we do things together. We have a whole lot of stuff uh, that we, if it's museums, yeah. if it's, you know, whatever. We and eat together. We eat together. <laughs> and and, then, and <clears throat> some of y'all might be like, well, I don't want to make them if they don't want to. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, I'm gonna make you because it's gonna be it's gonna be bonding <laughs> later on. It's gonna after a while you don't have to make anybody no more. They look forward to. And we have a thing in our family. If you slide away, I'm talking about my adult children. We're all together and we look up. It even including me. If one of us, they, now they love to catch me. If one of us, the whole family, sit at the table playing a game or eating, and you finish first, and you drifted away. Oof. They'll be like, you out of place. Get yeah. back to your darn place, Dad. Get place. back to your place. <laughs> that means that we've taught them that. They're... And I'll be like, I don't even argue. Nothing. I'll be like, all right, my bad. And I'll slide back over. And so we have a place in the family. Right. And when you're out of it, people, we miss you. That's bonding. You're missing the bonding time. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got to get those vacations. Um, and talk. we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few. Uh, it says family bonding uh, grows when they're Family bonding grows when there are times of play. Mm. That's that's where our bonding, I think that's where our bonding came in even more too because although we are serving in the house, when we get away, we're doing things fun together. Yeah. Um, we're, we're experiencing new things. I might not want to see that art museum, but I'm going to go because, you know, my daughter likes yeah. art, so we're going to go. Oh, everybody's going. Uh, you know, I might not want to go fishing, <coughs> but I'm going to go because my sons like to go fishing. We so just I'm did a vacation this year back in the I want to say it's August. Okay. Uh, we'd all been out for probably into our third or fourth day, maybe fifth day of vacation. But I love to fish. And my favorite fishing partner is my oldest son. I, mean, I love to fish with all my children that will go. But my oldest son is because my wife used to be my fishing partner. And when he got to an age that he could go with me, she was done. So <laughs> um, we had been nail gone for about five days on vacation. And there was a lake just not far away, but we just could not get the time yeah. to get it. Yeah. And somehow, the only time we could do it, it was get, going to get extremely hot between 10 and 12. But my wife and my oldest son both went fishing with me at the same time. And they both caught fish. Well, my wife sat and read a book while I was fishing. And my son, he wasn't catching them. He went out into the water till he caught a fish. But those were my two favorite partners from old. We had a chance to bond. And we'll remember that probably for, yeah. <laughs> for a long time. But I'm just giving you things that we find out what it is that each family member likes to do. And once you take yourself out of it and get in it, because that means I'm bonding with you, I'll do something. My wife loves to read, but she also likes to have the family read. So I'm going to learn to read. I learned to read something that will mm -hmm. that I can bond with her through that. Mm -hmm. Another way that I like to read, I like to hear my wife read to me. I can I don't know what it is. If y'all notice, when she's reading now, I stare in her face because I like to hear it. When we, when we do, when we were raising our children up, we have older ones and younger ones too. But whenever we got a chance to get away together, if it was a longer ride, we always broke out the word of God. And she'd say, babe, let me read to you. Yes. I drive. I figured it out. That was her way of keeping me driving. And, and she would just chill by reading the word of God to me. And I would get so excited driving down the road while she read the word of God to me. But she was making me a bigger reader listener <laughs> and, and, I, and i love audiobooks right now because probably because of that right there we were bonding and we still do that today and we'll be sitting somewhere on a getaway and i said babe can you read to me and she'll say yeah mm -hmm. yes yes <laughs> um uh it says the family that plays together stays together i think we've all heard that before never think that god intends for you to simply work and keep the household running he wants you to take time to to bond with with him, bond with your family. Um, he wants you to relax, rest, and have fun with your family. He gave you your family. I don't know why I'm thinking of this story, but um, we have a, have a friend on the line and, and that's on here that I noticed now. But I know personally, because I know them personally, that if they go to a special place in Boston, <laughs> in Cape Cod, they'll swim across a pond. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's a pond. And, and this is a thing. So what I'm saying is that don't joke what others what other families do to bond. They swim across the pond. I'm impressed. To do the entire pond. It might be a lake, but I think it's a pond. And, and if you're on the line, you know who I'm talking about. But they do this and they tell me, they've often they've rotated telling me about whether they accomplish it, how soon they accomplish it over the years. And it is an amazing thing that they do to bond. I've heard the youngest child say it. I've heard the oldest child. I've heard the mother say it. And then I've heard the father say, yeah, I'll let them do that. And I just enjoy it, hearing about it. So I'm just telling you, thank you for saying that. It's a lake. And and they swim across the lake as a way of bonding. And 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 see who, I don't know who wins or if they compete or not, but I'm just impressed with that. And so those are the things that you might do in your family. We don't know what it is that you and your family do to bond. Keep doing it. If it's bonding, y'all, do it. Keep doing it. 
keep doing it. We uh, this past Thanksgiving, um, my children coined this because we made them do stuff with us before Thanksgiving, the day before Thanksgiving or the day after, and they've coined it uh, Force Family Fun Day. So anytime we have, so now it's football. We do Thanksgiving. But before the pandemic, we would do football, have Thanksgiving Day. The next day, we would go to some shops, shops or, or go to a like movie that. or play, yeah. uh, go see the lights. Christmas yeah. lights. You going. Last, I think a couple of years, yeah, last year, we yeah. went to the lights. Everybody get in the car. We're going to the lights. So it's the whole vacation or holiday break is Force Family Fun Day. And it's not just our <clears throat> biological children. Our spiritual, spiritual children do, too. Yeah. We get together. And they coin it, like my wife said, Force, Force Family Fun Day. And they've made shirts. <laughs> and even me and my wife have tried to pull back like, after five, okay. six years. Like, well, they probably don't want to do that now. And somebody will send a text like, hey, what are we doing for Force Family Fun Day? And we're like, hey, we're in there. Yeah. You know? So, you know, but, and you don't know where Force Family Fun Day, like, I mean, we do it at a park right now. We can, we have aspirations to do it in Jamaica and say, hey, because y'all been so faithful for Force Family Fun Day and bonding mm-hmm. this family together. Here, we got tickets to, to Hawaii or to Florida to all y'all to come and play flag football there and have Force Family Fun Day. Whatever right. you and your family do to bond, my last example on that is, and it grows with them. You're creating a legacy. So many people hear about inheritance, but legacy is how you live your life, how you how your family sees you now. And so I said that to say, Did your grandchildren come, your into grandchildren that come into the fold. Everything. We we mm-hmm. we have gotten our kids. We've done spring breaks, and and I know people sometimes money is tight. We learn how to do spring breaks, um, how to do getaways, how to do trips, how to do vacations with little bits of budget. And when we had more, we could do it really big. Mm-hmm. But and, and we've gotten to a place that we're thinking, well, our children are older now; they probably don't want to travel with us. And we have some now that our kids remind us, hey, where are we going for family vacation this year? They, they're still in their mind and they're out of the house. Where are we going for family vacation? And so for, so I'm saying it to say, don't complain about if you got a spring for the plane tickets, mm-hmm. if they're going with you. Because your, your family is with you. You're still bonding. And they remember these bonding days. Mm-hmm. It could be just days. And yeah, like you say, it grows with you. It says yeah. the family must, on this last piece of the, the play, play is a, is a lot about playing. So yeah. we need to get some playing together. Yeah. A family must sit down and decide which activities each member enjoys the most. Then they should schedule activities that they can do together so that everyone's fun side is released. Mm. Because it's something that you like to do. You'll see that that person light up because God has put different things in us and wired us differently to what is fun to one may not be, but I'm willing to learn or or go and with see how you. you why you having fun doing so? I can yeah. have fun too. Exactly. Yep. So he's talking about camping, hunting, fishing visiting museums, uh, cooking out, you know, whatever it is, swimming, whatever, going to the beach, whatever. Feel activities. free if you're on here now, just throw some things in the chat that you can do to bond with your family. That do. That you like some, of these, some of these things that you like doing, that they like doing, just throw them in the chat for us. Help us out here. Yeah. <laughs> Might give us some new ideas too. <laughs> exactly. Uh, um, and we'll read those out when you when you put them in. What do you like to do? What do you, What does your family like to do? When they're on trips, vacation, when they're staying home. Mm-hmm. One time the pandemic had gotten to our family so bad, we bought, we had two TVs, took them outside in the backyard, bought a fire pit, and and slept and bought two tents. And my wife said, well, we ain't going to spend the night out here, but we stayed till midnight. Mm-hmm. And, and everybody enjoyed it. So I'm just saying, what is it that you and your family do to bond? Go ahead, babe. Okay. Um, while we're waiting on oh, you Somebody mentioned walking on the beach. Oh yeah, man, that is a beautiful one right there. Walking yeah. on the beach, that is amazing. That. Thank you for sharing that. I think it's uh, Joanna. G- no, G- um, Gina. Gina. Oh, Gina. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, Gina. Um, it says the activities will vary depending upon the ages of the children, income level of your family, and personal schedules. But with a with a little effort, again, that's that's being intentional. Uh, you can find activities that are relevant and affordable and meaningful to your family. Yeah. Some of the best times you have when it doesn't cost a lot of money. That's some of the best times you have. So we got theme parks. Somebody, their family loves to go to theme parks. <laughs> Ooh, Bush Gardens, <laughs> Bush, me. Yeah. I've never been to Six Flags, but one day I'll go there. You know, we've been, uh, we've been to some of them. Kingsman, Bush Gardens, Carowinds. <laughs> Carowinds, all we went, of that. We went to one of the best uh, campground parks one time. I remember years ago. Oh, um, yeah. 
Uh, Knobles in Pennsylvania. Was it one of the best uh, old parks you ever gonna run into? Yeah. Somebody else put their family loves to cook, cook and eat, eat. cooking and eating. <laughs> so they put to see who gonna put together yeah. the best meal or best part of the meal, and then we're gonna sit down and eat it together. Yeah. Come on, let's bond the family tonight. Amen. Amen. Good stuff, y'all. Okay, uh, the next one. So we said uh, family members bond when they serve one another. They bond when they play together, and they bond when they work together. Wow. Okay, so it says, uh, John 15, verse 2, that it may bring forth more fruit. Um, Christ understood that bonding occurred when people shared a common goal. So we're working together. We have a common goal uh, and passion. When, when they work together, they can be much more fruitful than if they work alone. Bonding uh, takes place in a family when members not only minister to one another, but also work together successfully on a joint project. Come on. You know, one time we traveled um, and we took our children, mm -hmm. our biological children, our spiritual children, and some of our God children to our family land. Mm -hmm. And they all built this porch together. Mm -hmm. I will never, ever forget that. Every one of them had a, a section. Mm -hmm. They were, My wife broke them into groups of twos and threes. Some was, measured. And some measured. Even my father was in a wheelchair and he had a, an assignment mm -hmm. for this project. Um, I had two aunts there, and their assignment was to stand by and talk to me on the grill. My wife said, told me to keep me company while they finished working on the porch. Mm -hmm. So, and that project yeah. did something for us. Yeah, yeah. And it says that, <clears throat> this is so true, every member of a family should feel needed. Uh, all should have a part in the upkeep of the home, doing dishes together, cleaning together, working together on behalf of others. Children should be given age-appropriate chores and know that their contributions are essential yeah. to the proper function of the family and the home. So when, you know, not just give them chores to just be doing it, but we need you, we, you know, you're, you're, important. Part of the, you're yeah. important, you're valuable. We need you to do this. I don't know what we would do without you, you know, putting up those dishes uh, for us yep. the other night or whatever. My son's home from college and hadn't gone back yet. He put the battery back on the, on the, on the ATV today. And anybody know me know I'm not very mechanically inclined at all. I'm the guy that call his pastor's wife over to hang out chandeliers up. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so, uh, okay, it says we must be careful not to let times of work become times of stress. Okay, that that can that can happen. Don't protect your peace and don't let stress or the enemy creep in on a family project. Ownership of a project means that we have all bought into it and are willing willingly doing our individual share. This will require guidance from parents to help children see the value and fun that comes from a shared responsibility. Mm -hmm. I think you put a note down if you wanted to. Oh, one of those shared was a project. This is a science project. My oldest son, I, and I said, I was right. This guy used to intentionally, I swear, y'all, he wouldn't do it when he was in the sixth and seventh grade. He would not do his science projects until the night before he'd tell us. Oh, mom, dad, I got a science project due. And it's, when is it due? It's due on Monday. He tells on Friday. And and I can still hear my oldest daughter saying, why do we always got to be here on a Saturday doing his project? <laughs> but we always we always did it. And we still talk about that today. It has bonded us. because And it happened, I said six or seven grade, but it happened probably four or five, four, yeah. fifth, six, yeah. seven grade. He just, <laughs> and he looked at it. And sometimes I'd use the, we use the same project and yep. change it up a little bit. Yep. And we just did it together because yeah. we didn't want him to have bad grades, but we all worked together and, and yeah. we divvy out little parts of it to you make the sun, you're going to make the mm -hmm. clay and all that kind of stuff. Yep. So, <laughs> yep, exactly. That was, that was family bonding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Gina also said, we also like walking the pier and watching people fish. Yeah. When people catching them big fish, yeah. like, dang. I hope it's me you catch watch catching big fish. <laughs> you know? I'm waiting for the spring. <laughs> waiting for it. Okay, so ministering um, <coughs> ministering for the Lord together is a very important part of family bonding as well. Not only are we ministering to each other and serving one another, but God also wants us to serve others yeah. and minister to others as a family. As, as, a, well. as a unit. As yes. a unit. Uh, it says, in, in addition to working in the home together, you will want to find ways that you can reach outside of the confines of your home to your community and the body of Christ. How many of y'all might serve in the 
with the serving the food pantry. You can serve. Um, we get a chance to pick up food together for our family. And all of everybody is here for that Sunday. We all get to pick it up together. Uh, my wife will sort it for us and we'll load it in the truck. Somebody will unload. But whatever it does, that, and we get a chance, that, that gives us a chance to work together, mm -hmm. minister to the people of God in the community. All those things. It's so many ways. When is the last time you and your family ministered as a unit? Mm -hmm. Come on. Here's some examples. As a family, you might travel uh, on outreaches together. You might go Christmas caroling to those who are shut in that can't get out. You might bring groceries to people that need it in your in your community. Uh, you might do yard work for elderly, an elderly relative or elderly neighbor um, and and things of that nature. So that's doing it to, together. These are tremendously rewarding um, rewarding and it cultivates feelings of shared accomplishments. Okay. That's good. Paul often referred to individual people as my fellow laborer, and we should be laboring with our family in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> okay. Um, Excuse our me. last section is family members bond when they face difficulties together. Mm. Uh, I wanted to read a piece in here that I studied early. Um, It says, all, it says all families face difficulties of one type or another, financial, physical, vocational, educational, and other kinds, you know, their death and family, whatever it may be. Um, it says, I saw something here before. Let me read the next piece. It says, during the trying times of life, you will bond with those who encourage, that's the feeling, encourage, assist, and strengthen you. Come on. Paul often referred to certain people also as fellow soldier or fellow uh, prisoner because they have been in prison with him. Uh, they shared a common bond. Bonds are <coughs> that are formed during hardship are not easily severed. Uh, Songs of Solomon 8 and 7 says, many waters can cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. Okay, listen to this, y'all. When your family faces a trial, it will either bring you closer or will drive you apart. Wow. You have the responsibility. And I say responsibility because you have the ability to respond. That's all resp responsibility means. Of how you respond, whether it is going to drive you apart or bring you closer together. Yeah. The result depends upon how you support one another, uh, shoulder the burden together, <coughs> and seek a solution together. When you face a problem in your family, don't waste time blaming other family members. Wow. Even if their actions, even if the family member's actions were a factor in it, let's see how we can get out of this. Okay. Instead, draw close to one another and determine to face it together. The family that can go through trials together can stand against anything. Come on. Can stand against anything. Hallelujah. So, woo, this is some good stuff. Y'all think this is good stuff? This is good stuff. <laughs> I, this good, is good stuff, stuff to me. I like this. I <laughs> You're like preaching this. to me. All right, so let's let's sum up some of this some of this up. There is nothing more wonderful than close, meaningful family relationships. It's really not. It's how God wired us. Yeah. We made. We're made for that. Um, God wants our families to be a wonderful sources of strength and fulfillment to us, not places of stress. He doesn't want it to be places of trauma or difficulty. When we begin bonding with others in our family, the atmosphere in the home begins changing as we grow closer to one another. It changes. All right. The bond with our families. Uh, I'm sorry. We bond with our families in several ways. First, we bond as we um, outdo one another in serving. Yeah, come Who on. Who's going to serve the most? <laughs> Let's make it a challenge. Yeah. If you like challenges, challenge it. That's a great challenge. Yeah. I can serve you more than you can serve mm. me. No, let you me can't. Try. No, you can't. You probably right, but <laughs> I'm not gonna let you. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you. No, nope. I can try. It's I'll be honest. With you, I try to. I try to outgive God. That don't ever work either. But I'm. I'm, 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 going to, I'm trying to go. That's I ain't trying to, to be try. better than nobody else. I'm just trying to serve my wife more than she's gonna ever be served. I'm just gonna keep doing it. <laughs> yes. It says first we uh we bond as we outdo one another in serving. We think of their needs before our own. Okay. Second, we strengthen our family bonds when we play together. Mm. Remember, we got to play together. We got to do that, you know. Uh, enjoying one another's company. 
Third, it's important to have projects and times in which we work together, uh, achieving a common goal within the family and within the kingdom of God. And the fourth is we develop stronger family bonds when we successfully face trials together. As we grow in these <coughs> four areas we just talked about, our families bond and connect in ways that unite us and make us strong. Amen. And make us strong. There's nothing like a strong family bond. There's nothing like it's a strong family bond is so attractive. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's, that's good. It's People so notice when you serve your family, when you serve each other, it is attractive to mm -hmm. others that are watching. Mm -hmm. And people watch your family. You mm -hmm. determine whether it's going to be a pot that they're positively watching you mm -hmm. or they're yeah, looking right. at all this like, Ooh, mm -hmm. that's showing me how not to be. That's not family bonding right there. Mm -hmm. You make up your mind which way it's going to be. Yes. Take us home, yes. baby. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that's all we have. I was going to ask a question, but I think we covered it with the things that you like to do. Um, yeah, I think that's that's good. It's, it's some question here. But, you know, one of the questions on here says, can a family be too close? I don't think so. Mm. I don't think so. No. I mean, you can cross. As long as you have certain boundaries as kids grow up and they get yeah. married and you got your boundaries there. But, you know, as far as, you know, just heart to heart, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know, the support, the support is is strong and the bonding is strong. Okay. So, um, we want to make sure that everybody receives some of the bonding information and how your family bonds and how you can work together, play together, um, how you serve together and serve one another, <coughs> you know, serve one another as well. So, uh, with that, I think, if, unless anyone has any questions, well, I think we're going to land this, this plane. Yeah. I always say land the ship. We're I always really say land the ship. ship. We ain't land the ship at all, but really I always say ship. it too. <laughs> We're bonded. We land ships. <laughs> we land ships, yo. Um, Those of you that joined us tonight, uh, I see Jennifer join, uh, uh, just joined us. Hey, or you may have already been on for a while. If anybody got on, maybe got on late, uh, you can always hit the playback. Mm -hmm. um, it's good stuff. Uh, there's a uh, next teaching. Uh, the next lesson will come up with the, some great teachers next week. Uh, it'll either be the Hammonds or the Garys, and that'll be on lesson number nine: ministering mm -hmm. as a family. Mm -hmm. Come on, man! Mm -hmm. You already got a head start. We was just talking about that tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ministering as a family, you got a head start on what's going on next week. Yep. So. Uh, if this has been fruitful for you, um, as we go, I'm going to get ready to pray for us. But just drop something in the chat and say, um, you know, wave, thumbs say up, thumbs, thumbs up, something that you heard us at all. Um, um, thank you, Jen, for rewatching. Thank you, uh, Pastor Ken, I guess. Somebody at New Life says excellent teaching. Um, Pastor Nancy said earlier was so good. Thank you all so much for being on. Those that are in different states, those that are in the same city. Uh, we appreciate y'all. Again, I'm Dwight. This is Angela. And we've been talking about bonding the family. Let's pray. Father, we exalt you tonight. You know, as we got ready to pray, my wife just grabbed my hand. So if you're near a family member tonight, this is the first way to start bonding. Let's pray together. Mm -hmm. Father, we acknowledge you and your very presence tonight on this line and in these airwaves. We give you glory and we send you a Shabbat of high praise of hallelujah tonight. Father, we say those that are not on, that will come on and watch later, we send uh, send you a Shabbat of praise for them joining and tuning in later. And Lord, we pray that they will pick up something from it that will be fruitful and help them with it as they bond their family. Yes. Lord, those that are under the, our listening voices tonight, we pray that something has been said, done to touch them, to uh, spark their uh, their serving servanthood even more in their family. And Lord, I just come to you now to uh, as I bind the, any uh, destruction or weapon that tries to rise up against the, any of these families on this line tonight. Father, I, I ask you in advance to just go ahead and crush the enemy ahead of us. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this lesson yes. of family bonding. Thank you for family. In the name of Almighty Jesus, we thank you for family. Amen. 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 Have a All great right, night. Thanks for hanging out with us. <laughs>